Nasal injuries in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu are common, and I wanted to give a brief overview. They're important to discuss because they can lead to sequela down the road, including triggering a skin infection such as cellulitis, triggering cosmetic changes to the face which can lead to psychological distress later on, triggering changes in the ability to breathe properly through the nose, and can impact the sinuses and the eyes. They can also be associated with concussions. Let's take a brief look at the anatomy. The first structure on the face that you see is the skin. Underneath the skin, we have several layers of muscle, and then we have the nose itself. The top one-third is composed of bone, the nasal bone, and the bottom two-thirds is cartilage. About 30% of the world's population is colonized with staph in the nostrils. It's a colonization, meaning that the staph aureus lives peacefully with the other pathogens, the other germs and yeasts in the area. One of the most common injuries to the nose is an abrasion or a scrape. We've all suffered an abrasion or scrape somewhere on our body. Generally, you want to stop training, wash the area immediately with warm water and soap. And the way to manage it is washing the area two to three times a day until healing and applying Bactroban antibacterial ointment twice daily until it heals. Complications of an abrasion can include cellulitis, a skin infection of the area due to Staph aureus, or impetigo, which is a bacterial infection of the skin due to strep. The next type of nose injury would be a laceration or a cut. If you suffer a laceration to the nose, again, stop training immediately, wash the area with warm water and soap, and take a look in the mirror. Is the laceration, is the cut, are the edges gaping? Are you easily able to oppose the edges, meaning put them together? If it's a small laceration, again, washing the area three times a day until it heals, applying Bactroban antibacterial ointment twice daily. If it's gaping or bleeding, you may need to be seen in the immediate care for either sutures or dermabond glue or steri strips. The next nasal injury, which is very common, is a contusion or a bruise from trauma. Generally, you will notice swelling of the nose and possibly some mild bleeding, bruising. This can lead to residual issues with breathing down the road if not managed properly. Generally, mild contusions can be managed with icing the area on a regular basis and anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen or naproxen if allowed by your physician. The next type of injuries to the nose are nosebleeds, and they can be divided into anterior nosebleeds, bleeds that originate from the front of the nose, and posterior nosebleeds, which originate from structures further back in the nose, posteriorly toward the back of the head. The most common type of nosebleed is an anterior nosebleed due to Kesselbox plexus. Kesselbox plexus is a collection of small blood vessels on the inside of the nose, very close to the opening of the nostrils. Generally, you suffer with bleeding from one nostril that isn't very brisk at all. This can be managed right at the academy by sitting up, leaning forward, and pinching your nose gently with your thumb and forefinger until the bleeding stops. A more serious type of nosebleed is the posterior nosebleed, which originates from the branches of the sphenopalatine artery much further back in the nose. Generally, with a posterior nosebleed, you will have brisk bleeding from both nostrils. In general, a posterior nosebleed is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to manage in the academy. And if you suffer a nosebleed where you're bleeding briskly from both nostrils, it's a good idea to have a teammate drive you to the nearest immediate care as soon as possible, because this will most likely require imaging and further interventions such as nasal packing and close follow-up by an ear, nose, and throat physician. Another type of nasal injury is the broken nose the nasal bone fracture, which occurs here. Generally, with a broken nose and nasal bone fracture, you may be able to see a deformity immediately when you look in the mirror. There will be significant swelling almost immediately, likely bleeding from one or both nostrils, a black eye, etc. Nasal bone fractures are generally divided into non-displaced, where the pieces are in perfect alignment, or displaced, where one is moved compared to the other one. 
with a nasal bone fracture or a suspected nasal bone fracture, it's a good idea to go to the near, nearest immediate care and undergo plain imaging of the nasal bone to elucidate the anatomy. It is generally managed with icing, anti-inflammatories, etc. Whether you suffer a non-displaced or displaced nasal bone fracture, I think it's a good idea to be evaluated by an ear, nose, and throat doctor to manage this condition because some of the sequelae can include a deviated nasal septum, which can affect breathing, and it can affect the sinuses also, including the maxillary sinuses down the road. So fractured nasal bones are best managed by an ENT to ensure proper healing. The last type of injury is a septal hematoma, much more rare. This is a collection of blood around the septum, the middle portion of the nose that runs midline. Generally, this will consist of swelling, pain, difficulty breathing. These need to be managed very carefully because they can lead to an infection with a pus pocket, a septal abscess. They can lead to perforation, a hole in the nasal septum, and they can even lead to collapse of the tissues in the area, causing a saddle nose deformity, which can obviously have a cosmetic impact and, just as importantly, difficulty breathing.